Solaris has a lighting tool that you may have missed, but it's definitely something that you're going to want to check out because it is a total game changer when it comes to lighting your scenes. So this, let's go, actually, let's just get this set up. So we'll create a soft create and dive on into that. Let's just create some geometry. We'll just, nothing fancy, just drop down a pig head. Let's remove that shader and then we'll just drop down a match size. Just to set it on the origin here, we'll just shrink it down a little bit. Then I'm gonna drop down a backdrop node. This is part of my tool set that's available on Patreon. You can grab that on there. Uh, it's not needed, but definitely something that's helpful. You can drop down backdrop and easily create a backdrop for any of your scenes. I also have some other tools in there, so if you're interested in that, make sure to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. This project file will also be available on Patreon if you are interested in how I set any of this stuff up. You can grab it there. But let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. Let's just set up a camera here so can control click on the camera icon and it'll create a camera from our viewpoint. It's also, before we do that, set up a material library. And we'll dive on in here. So I'm gonna set this up. I have three render engines right now. I have Karma, obviously I have Redshift and I also have V-Ray. So I'm gonna set it up for all three. That way you can see that this works for all three render engines. Um, and Pretty much anything that'll run in Solaris, it should uh, work for that. Let's drop down an RS material builder. And we'll just jump in here, control copy that. Whoops. Let's wire that back in there. And we'll paste these out here. And we can just come to this reflection roughness and let's just set that to 0.9. We'll set that for basically all these and we'll wire that into our collect node. Let's also just delete that. And we can set up a material for karma. So material X standard surface. By wiring them all into the collect node that allows it to work with all of the different render engines. So let's just wire that into the collect node. I'm also disabling the output here. So we only have our collect node um, as far as what we can see for a material. And then let's set the specular reference to 0 0.9. And let's lastly create our V-Ray material. I can type V-Ray material. There we go. And V-Ray works a little bit differently. It is based off of glossiness. So we'll set this glossiness to 0.1 and that should give us pretty much the same look for all of these. And we'll wire that into our collect node as well. Now we can click assigned geometry. Let's also select our material, so our collect node. And we'll drop the SOP create into the geometry path there. Then I'm going to drop down a merge node just to give us uh, something to put all of our lights into. And let's also just control click on our area light here. This is how you would normally light your scenes. If you were working inside Houdini, you can just, you know, look through your light and then move around as long as you're, as long as you're locked, you can light your scenes and place your, your lights that way. But that is not the best way in my opinion. So let's take a look at that here in just a minute. Let's set up our render settings first. Come back to our merge node. Let's also just look through our camera and let's set up the render settings. Drop that down and fire that in and take a look. So if we come to Karma, I'm just gonna make sure that this is set to CPU. Come to Redshift, I can come to Advanced and set this sampling. We'll set or create and enable progressive sampling so that we have an IPR in our viewport there. And then V-Ray, let's just make sure that this is set to CPU. Just for now, obviously of GPU, you can set it to whatever you want, but I'm gonna keep it on CPU for the moment. So let's go ahead and load up our Karma. And you can see that we have our light. So if I go ahead and select this light, we can come over to the settings here, and this is the placement mode. So the, the normal, no, normal mode is the edit, which is not super useful. If we come to specular mode though, we can just click on our geometry. And it takes a second when you first do it, but the 
by doing that, that will allow us to place our specular reflection in that spot. So I can click in different spots and it works pretty quick, pretty quickly. And I can mess around with it. I've got a backdrop in the way. So uh, if I, let's just click back over here. So it's dark now, it's because the light is behind our backdrop. So if I hold control and click and drag, we can bring that light closer. So we can get some cool placement options. Uh, just speed up your workflow with that really, really quickly. We can also hold control and shift at the same time and then click and drag. And it takes a second, but we can adjust the intensity with that, which is super, super useful as well. Keeps you working quickly. Go ahead and place that light there. And then just to show, it does work with other renders as well. So we have Redshift here, so I can click and we're now we're working with, with Redshift. And you can see that I can place the lights with that. Same with V-Ray. Takes a second to load up and then we can click and it'll take a second to process, but then after that's pretty quick. And we can just place our lights wherever we need and it's super useful. We also have a couple of other modes here so we can place our diffuse here as well. So this is where the diffuse highlight will, will show up. So we can place it like that. We also have our shadow, which is a little bit differently. So if we take a look, we hold shift and click to actually place this. So if I wanna place the shadow over here. I can hold shift and uh, click on our model and we should get our, oops, we gotta place the pivot first, I should say. So if we place our pivot, we can then click and place our shadow. And you can also click and drag, which is kind of nice. So different ways to, to go about doing that. I personally don't think I would use the shadow all that much, but the specular, I will definitely use in my workflow. This is very similar to something like OD Tools, I think has like a, a way to do this. But uh, the thing that this is basically just a dumbed down version of is a plugin that is available for Houdini that I've done something for in the past. Uh, it's called HDRI Light Studio. It's a super useful plugin. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, by the way. Just uh, used their, their software because I thought that it was uh, super useful uh, basically does this but it's in a lot more detail and it has textures that are on all the lights it's not just for making HDRIs uh, you can actually place physical lights for basically any render inside Houdini and it's super useful it's also a plugin for a ton of other software as well but super useful and allows you to place lights basically just like this with some a bunch of other methods as well and then their their textures on the lights are are super super nice as well you can do a lot of different things with that that is basically how you go about setting this up you can also go to the gl viewport and place lights this way and if i just alt click and drag we can do a second light as well oops looks like we got an error but there we go so we just select whatever light that we want to affect and then we can just click on our model and place the lights that way. And then obviously we can switch back to something like Karma or whatever and then we can get all of our settings in there. So if I want to just bring down the brightness or bring up the brightness, we can do it in that or change the placement. Just be careful not to click off uh, obviously, if you place this in the a spot that you like, and then you want to get rid of this this little like ray cast um, icon, don't just click off because you'll move your light. Just be careful of that. You'll have to click over to the edit, and that gets rid of that. But anyways, hopefully this is a feature that uh, you'll find useful. If you didn't know about it, now you know about it. It's definitely something that you're going to want to take a look at. It's not available in the default uh, OBJ uh, part of Houdini. So um, jump over. Another reason to just jump over to Solaris, it's going to be a lot more useful in Houdini 20, along with uh, all the updates to Karma. So definitely something you're going to want to take a look at. And you can use this with the, the light mixer as well. So if you wanna 
toss all your lights into that, then you can use that. But anyways, uh, this makes uh, lighting a lot more, a lot more fun in my opinion. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, if you want to learn more about Houdini, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over a bunch of different things inside Houdini. So make sure to take a look at that. Got a bunch of other fun stuff coming and we'll be taking a look at a uh, Houdini 20 as soon as that comes out as well. All the new stuff in Karma. Very excited for all that as well as like the cloud tools and stuff. So very excited for all the, the new things that are coming in Houdini 20. Uh, if you do want to check out HDRI Light Studio, by the way, I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's not an affiliate link or anything, just a simple link to their website because um, they do have a pretty useful tool there. Uh, it does cost a little bit of money. So if you don't have the extra money, then definitely take a look at this inside Solaris. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.